There are times in life when artwork can feel like fighting, and fighting is ugly. Welcome to the ceremony. Ah yes, Sigvald the Magnificent, the perfect prized prince of she who thirsts, the young god, the god of pretty much everything besides what the other three are about. Slanesh is a very all-encompassing deity, but in this video I wanted to lay out my process for painting Sigvald. It's a, uh, it's a very unique model, and I was given this ahead of time, so I knew that a lot of other pro painters would be putting their best work onto this model, and every time I get one of these models and I'm given that chance, I feel a little extra pressure to perform naturally and just do something good and show my best work among my peers. So as I was pondering my painting process on this model and coming up with the recipe, it gave me a chance to capture some of those thoughts in a video. Um, we'll be just bringing this model up to a roughly base coated status. I'm using the airbrush. I'm wet blending here and there, as we'll see on the, on the base. Um, but just trying to find this color communication on what could become a very complex figure and something of a, of a showcase quality and something that packs a lot of interesting features. So how do I begin all of that? In a lot of these videos, I'm taking just one piece of a model, leaving everything else just base primer, painting it up. But that's not always the way I paint. I don't always know which choices I'm going to make. Sometimes I have to go back and undo things, redo them. So I hope this video helps to provide a deeper insight into the painting process and how I get things started. We will have many more tutorials on Sigvald to look forward to, but at this point, moment zero, this is where it all starts. Let's take a look at old Sigvald. Here he is, base coated. I chose to separate my colors of primer on certain elements. I know that the cape will be a bright and beautiful purplish magenta tone. The armor will be black, kind of offset all that brightness. I have the head uh, started off with a zenithal base coat. I also gave the base a little touch of the zen. So to kick things off, I'm just going to establish a bit of a gradient the trusty old airbrush. I've got some light gray mixed up and I'll be working in very small amounts. I'll show you just how little and thin you want to be mastering the art of very faint dots because that is how we are going to be layering him up. It's going to go fast because he's a very small model for the size of the tool. Just have that fall down the front of his thighs, top of his chest. Very, very gradual because I still want this to read as black, so it may be done in just a single coat, but using the right tool for the job will get me going as quickly as possible. Let's give that one more pass. Many thin layers. Decent. Very exciting, I know, just various shades of gray for the moment. And I can go a little bit heavier on his shoulder pads because they're facing directly uh, upwards. That'll do it on the body for now. Following the body, whipping in the wind, we have the splendiferous cape. I'm just going to lay down a nice foundational coat of purple with my airbrush. I'll do this in a few layers. With a base coat of purple established, you can still see the zenithal primer showing through. This is four coats of paint later. I've now mixed a little bit of black in to my purple paint, darken it, darkening it down by about 50%. just want to add some shadows on the lower side of the cape here and maybe shoot some across the sides on the upper portion. If we control the angle, we can shade some of these more specific wrinkles aim for those divots and let the overspray create the fade over to these other areas. 
They're a little more expressed, but they are a downward facing angle, so you want to make sure there's a significant shadow in place. We'll spray some onto the upper side. Coming at it from a sideways angle, you can see the spray catching on the side of these folds. It's a fairly wrinkly area on his back. So if I spray at an angle, I can take advantage of those ridges. I'll just get a light shadow running through the crevice here as well. Spraying very, very lightly. Very thin paint, being quick about it so I don't cause the paint to spread. If I hold the airbrush too long in one area, the paint will sort of spiderweb out in opposite directions. Losing all control. And to give you an example again of the dilution on the old cube of learning, you see this is almost the consistency of dirty paint water. I'm working in very, very thin layers. This will have to be done in multiple passes as well. And here our cape has had a chance to dry. My oh my. To add some highlights, I'll use Murderous Magenta through the airbrush once again. Very thin and I just want to spray on the top of these folds. So a couple speckles got away from me here, but having a wet brush nearby, because this is such a thin amount of paint, I can pick it up. There's your mistake of the day. And there it is dry. No evidence of the splatters and little evidence of the coats of paint, which is just how I like it. Nice and thin. And here it is three layers later. All successive layers will be added with the hand brush, but the airbrush helped me kick off the gradient and get things going in the right direction, save a little time. I like it. Let's take a look at that beautiful mane. It's base coated with Ushtabi bone, and in my airbrush I have a mixture of Guncore brown, as well as Vallejo buff, hitting a tone around this area. It's going to be a blonde. And since I have the airbrush out, I'm just getting a little airbrush happy. can at least establish things here. I might cover it up with a uh, wet blend or improve it, maybe add to it. But just adding some general smooth shadows while the airbrush is out. It just feels right on this Slanesh model. just want to be nice and smooth and pure in the eyes of chaos. This step is going to take a little more time. On my palette, I have coal black, sulfuric yellow, and battlefield brown. I've mixed them all together to form this kind of uh, patina colored soup. Yeah, that's what we'll go with. And I'm picking out all of the trim. It's going to be black and gold with velvet linens. But all of these little uh, bits of filigree and trim, I want all of these to be non-metallic metal gold and we'll go in the colder direction is why I've included the green instead of a warm brown we'll get deeper into that but I'm establishing things for the moment I'm also going to take some sulfuric yellow and just wet blend it into some of these areas that would be catching more light in a more major way all the little bends and curves. This isn't a finalizing step, but it's helping me visualize things and paint a better picture outside of my mind and on the model. So we'll just carry this out across the figure and come back when we have a rough idea of our non-metallic metal established. Now before I get fully invested into the all the little bits of gold trim. I'd like to attach them to the base so I'm not just flopping them around in my hands. So 
Let's get a quick start applied here. I have coal black, Vallejo black, bloodstone, a little bit of uh, battle dress green as well. The bloodstone and the battle dress green are just so I can work some tonal varieties in here, add a little bit of interest to the stone, make it look like there's some old strains of minerals or variety of colorization running through uh, these carvings. So here and there, as I go, I'm just dragging some striations of bloodstone through here. It's a process, you know, I'm, I'm wrapping, I'm enveloping, going back and forth. I also want to pull some battle dress green in as well. And the idea here is that the base looks very drab and the model looks very fab. And as I'm going, it looks like the battle dress green can kind of be the color of the the dirt, and we'll let the coal black be the ruins. And as they're crushed into powder, they can kind of co-mingle and create all kinds of various shades. I like it. But now that I have some basic gradients smeared in place, I can start establishing some of these smaller and finer edges and items. All right, following a quick dry brush of Ushtabi Bone, I have the Army Painter's Strong Tone as well as Green Tone. I'll be applying these washes in various areas, keeping the Green Tone more located to the statue and the Brown Tone more located to the ground. But, of course, same as with the wet blending, these two colors can intermingle and create all kinds of different tones. Let's see what happens. Okay, finally that fateful moment when I could attach him to the base. Everything needs more work, but you see the idea here. He's slowly kind of going through these phases of rendering. At this point I'm just slapping down a base coat of Ushtabi bone wherever his skin is exposed. And I'm also applying a coat of Kador red base for every gem. I'll have to search him over high and low to find every single jewel, but I think the bright red will have a nice stark contrast with all this darkness, all this purple. It's a very vampiric color scheme. I like where this is going. Okay, almost there. Getting through so many ugly steps all at one time and then I can Start pulling pieces away, finalizing them. So, just a few more things that I want to do. You can see I'm painting in his horns. We'll base them with a very deep gray. He's got blonde hair, blonde skin. So these dark horns will stand out nicely against all of that. I'll take care of the rest of this horn off camera. I'm sure you get the idea. It's a base coat. I also have his uh, weaponry, the mirror shield, it's just tacked on so I can remove it. I've got a special plan for the mirror shield as well as his sword. So that's just for now on the mirror shield to get a general idea of the colorization. I'm going to mix some white and blue together and just base this in a nice sky blue. Definitely want to, I want to paint this like it's reflecting his environment later on down the line. So for now it will look like so. I mean my, my basic idea here is have it reflecting the battlefield. It's a very small object though. How do I make that you know look convincing without just turning all kinds of bad on me. I think if I can manage to paint in a reflected castle tower, burning of course, right about here, you know, kind of paint a spire, a ziggurat, castle tower, off in the distance, I will definitely need a finer brush, but for now, this uh, tree stump will turn into a burning tower at a later date. 
We'll see about that. Now on the sword, let's give it a similar treatment. Generally I want the sword to be very affected by its environment. I'm going to pull a lot of yellow into the upward facing angle on the top side to reflect the uh, sunlight or whatever the atmospheric situation is. So taking a cue from his base, being painted in with coal black and such, we'll assume that that is the environment being reflected on the lower side of his blade. I'll even get a little bit of that Ushtabi bone in there. Start working our reflective waves of light, roughly. That's the theme of this video. Gritty, rough, hard-hitting, the Steven Seagal of miniature painting. You can see we've got these two waves coming in like so. And let me just grab a pinch of that yellow. Everything can be changed however I choose from this point. But this model has a lot of a lot going on, a lot of different elements and items. I like it. I want it to be something special that I can be proud of, so hence all the uh, fiddling around and sub-assembling. But now that I have him somewhat together, we can get to the especially boring part the part where I paint in every detail that I can see inside of my mind. I'll have to get these shoulder pads in place. This whole model assembles in a very specific way where I need to attach the flowing cape to his back before I attach the shoulder blades, shoulder plates I mean, so it it's gonna get a little uh, a little strange, but that is par for the course, I mean. We are here after all. And there he lies, loosely rendered, a shapeless shifting mass awash in the sea of chaos, becoming and unbecoming, not quite a prince, not quite a pauper. He is at the shit point. Everything has been very crudely applied and I have a an idea of where I'm going with this paint job. So let's go forward into that future, knowing that we don't have to repeat any of these steps and what lies ahead is a beautiful territory, a painted world. So let's get out there and do just that. Painting. I'm, I'm saying go out and do some painting.